Hello my crafty friends and welcome to week number 10 of the 12 week get organized challenge sponsored by Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. I'm so happy to be here with you today kicking off this 10th week. This week we are going to talk about photos and mementos and getting all those things organized, setting yourself up for success with all of this that happens around photos and mementos. So where to start? You have your handout. You want to get that going first of all, print it, download it, save it on your computer, whatever works for you. And then let's just jump right into all the things that you're going to need to be successful organizing your photos. So you need a storage system for photos to start with, and that could be a classic photo storage box. It could be something small like uh, our, this is a four by six photo storage fab file. We have the five by seven photo storage fab file. I'll go through everything in a little more detail. You just need to figure out what's gonna work best for you to get started. Need some sort of storage for your mementos. I'm gonna talk about using a binder system, which is what I like for putting everything together, but for just simply storing mementos, what are you gonna put those in? We'll talk a little bit more about some of the ideas you can use for that. Some computer storage, of course, for your photos as well. Uh, labels, which we always need. Plain paper for creating sorting guides and a family timeline journal or spreadsheet and I will show you that as well. So let's just jump right in with what are you gonna do? Well, I found that a family journal, which I will show you, or timeline, spreadsheet, whatever you wanna use, is a really great way to, um, especially when it comes to journaling and getting things in the right order and jogging your memory. Uh, so this is, um, this is a family timeline notebook that I put together. And basically what this is, is just a shortcut of information. So it doesn't really matter like how the information gets in there. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can see some of my pages are just plain, you know, I just wrote on them. Sometimes it's a good, I was trying to see if I could find, of course, uh, you know, here's a picture. I put a picture in one of them. We have these extra photos. So just, you know, keeping a journal of, this is when London got his driver's license. So I had this in, this little new driver uh, die. So it's kind of fun because you can turn it into a fun, not only is it a journal, something you're gonna use that's gonna help you keep things orderly when you're scrapbooking. It's a great way to use up some of those things in your craft supplies that you might not actually use on a page or, or other projects. So. And the point of a family journal, family timeline, is just that. It's a place to keep all the notes. Where did you go on spring break? What was the big Christmas gift? You know, depending on where you are in your life. What year did uh, your, your father retire? What year did you retire? Any of those things. It's all gonna be right here and keep everything just in order. And it's a fun way to get that going. There is a family timeline a blog post about putting this together, but it's just simply a notebook that's in chronological order that I use when I'm sorting photos or anything I run across that's like it reminds me of a particular thing. Like I might see an old uh, Facebook post. My sister put up, a, a, she puts up old like throwback Thursday Facebook posts and then she put up a picture of the kids in these, um, in the Halloween costumes and the year that they wore those costumes. I was like, oh, I need to throw that in my journal. Sometimes you find the photo and there's no date on them, right? So um, it's just a great way to keep track of that kind of stuff. You don't have to do, I'll tell you the one mistake that I made with my photo journal was that I did it in a spiral binder, spiral notebook, which means that you, um, it's difficult to add to. So in hindsight, I would have done that in a disc binder. That'd be my big tip for the day, but it doesn't, you can, you don't have to do that. You can do something like this, which is literally a timeline along your wall where you're just keeping notes of things, right? It's easy to jot it down. I know some people have done some really amazing family timelines in their craft room along the wall that are um, actually something that they cut with their Cricut machine. And it's a beautiful piece of wall art with all these pictures and notes kind of attached to it, kind of a wall collage. So that's a great option also to do um, something like that, but you really need something when we, especially when we talk about, um, you know, having someone else help you sort photos, somebody else is probably going to give you some information that you want to add to your journal or your timeline. It's, they're going to remember things differently than you. And so that's a great benefit as well. 
Okay, so that's gonna be what your starting point. And then you're gonna gather all of your photos together and your mementos together. And the very first, most basic step is to get all those things together. And that is what we call the need to sort. These are all the things that we need to sort. Sometimes within that, you're gonna have things pre-sorted. I'm gonna address digital a little bit separately, but mostly it's the same thing. You need to find all those, all those pictures on your computer, and then you need to sort them the same way. So everything is gonna go chronologically at first. That's our first step to sort chronologically. Um, <coughs> and get those labeled, even if it's just by year, right? And then the second step is to um, sort them by event within that year. And the third thing, and then label them, these are sorted. And then the last thing you're gonna do is separate out the things that you're ready, that are we call ready to scrap, right? And that is what, when we take that next step and move more towards a project planner and away from uh, just boxes of photos. Now, I got asked a question just this week about photo sorting and photo boxes. And um, I prefer to, so photo boxes work great. They hold a ton of photos, but they're big. And when you open a photo box and you look in there, there are a lot of pictures. I don't know, I think this box holds like 1,200 pictures or 1,500 pictures, it's a lot. And when you look in there and start looking through, even if they're organized chronologically, there's a lot. And what happens with your brain when you see a lot? Well, in this case, you can easily get overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, I've got to choose these pictures. But the other thing that happens is we start going through those pictures and pulling random pictures out and looking at them. And it's joyful and it's fun and it has all these memories and all this really good stuff attached to it. But if our goal is to actually be scrapbooking those pictures, it takes all that time away from actually crafting. So one of the reasons I love something smaller like the fab file, I'll just grab one, is that it's only this big. So this could literally be an album, right? You've got 300 pictures in there. You, this might be Chris, this might be a year, this might be Christmas, whatever it is, but you're just gonna label it and then when, when you wanna work on it, it's just that one box that you're pulling off the shelf to work on. So it, it's easier on your brain and it's faster also, right? Because you're already dialed in to a smaller number of photos versus, you know, looking in here and saying, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed or, oh, look at this, look at that. And then you're distracted from what you're doing, right? The squirrel, you get the squirrel distraction. Okay, so how are you gonna go about actually sorting those pictures? Now, I wanna introduce you to, to to a couple of things here before I get started. First thing, <clears throat> there are some downloads at the end of the blog post. Well, they're sprinkled throughout the blog post also, but we also put them at the end. This is a multi-album planner. I'm gonna talk more about this in just a couple of minutes, but I want you to be ahead of the game thinking if you do multiple albums. So I initially did an album um, for myself and each of my boys, right? So I was always working on three albums and this is how I kept track of how, where I was in each album rather than having to constantly go back and forth, right? We're gonna address that a little bit here too when we talk about memento plan or project planning. These two sheets are event details. They're super simple. When you pull them up, um, when you print them or download them, I mean, there's always something you could do yourself. Just, I just kind of simplified that step. There are two formats. There is a vertical uh, portrait and landscape. And what the difference is, is depending on the size of box you're using and how you're folding these to keep photos in them, <coughs> because, or not, right? So if you're gonna just three hole punch them and put them in the binder, or if you're gonna keep them, um, you know, full sheet, but there's two different orientations. So just depending, I, <laughs> I like the landscape orientation because of the way it, when I fold it up like this, so the top line says event uh, dates and event name, and then I can use it in my photo boxes as a way to keep my photos organized. I didn't really fold this one very well, but so now I can get that whole group of photos into this little wrap. So when I do look into my photo storage box, I can pull out a whole group of photos and I'm less likely 
to get distracted by everything else in the box. So if I say, oh, I'm gonna pull the photos for the road trip in 2019, and this is labeled road trip 2019, now I can just grab that whole pile of photos and not be distracted by everything else that's in the box. So uh, how you fold it five by seven, I mean, whether you're doing four by six or five by seven photos, it's still gonna create this pocket sort of thing, this file around your pictures. So I would definitely get, now what I never did before and no, uh, dawned on me today was I should print these first and then I can write in the details on them. So we're going to make sorting guys. Let me, I guess you don't know everything that I know, right? So I'm ahead of the game here. I mean, I haven't said it. So, so these are sorting guides. It's just a simple sheet of paper. I use some really ugly orange paper. I've had them for years. You can see, um, and on my sorting guides, I have major events and I'm really going to encourage you to do this. Um, especially if you have things that happen in your life over and over again. So uh, this is 2009. So SB, that stands for spring break. That trip we went, that year we went to Moab. Uh, 4th of July block party. August was Lake Chelan. September was Mike's wedding. And then I have some different um, details here. And at the very bottom, I have the ages of my children. Um, the birth, the age they turned this year, right? That sounds stupid. Like, of course, you know how old your kids are. But really, if you're trying to remember all of these things and you're counting, oh, London was born in 98. And this is 2009. Oh, no, London was born in 96. Max was born in, that's exactly what happens, right? It's just happening right now. He was, Max was 98. So this is the year London turned 13. He started in seventh grade and, and, Fin and finish the year in eighth grade, which was also kind of a key factor because you're constantly trying to remember what year, um, kid, you know, like figure out what years kids were in what grades and when. So it's just a cheat sheet and I have it on the bottom of all of them. So I know as I'm going through and sorting photos, if I see something from London in the eighth grade, like up to Christmas, it goes in this year, and after Christmas, it goes in the next year, but it just makes it really fast and easy. Then you see all these sticky notes that I've got on the side here. Within that year, there were all of these things that happened, right? So I know that's going to come up, and so as I'm sorting pictures then, I can, t I can sort onto that year to, oh, here's Halloween, 4th of July pictures. This is spring break. This is London's birthday. And I've pre-made the sticky notes. Now I did mine with um, my label maker, but you can do it with you can do it with paper. You know I like uh, plastic sticky notes. These are our shut your flap tabs because they don't fold over and bend, right? Even if you write a paper sticky note, it'll if it gets folded, it won't pop back up. But these do, which is why I like them. I also don't like my handwriting very much, so whenever I can, I make things on the label maker going back again we talked about labels previously i actually printed all of these out of my label maker and stuck them on there and in hindsight i would have just bought sheets of stickers and typed them all up in the computer and printed them all at one time would have been much faster than using my label maker but that's what i've got so now i'm so i'm using my sorting guides i'll have them spread out on the table sorting those pictures and i can add to them right whatever notes at, that I come across. So uh, like this one, 2010, that was London's, went to Bellarmine High School. That was a new school for him. So it's on there, major things. I can jot them down as I come across. But the thing I had never thought about before, because I always talked about it in a separate class, Mementos, was taking my event details sheet and having that with these or a pile of them as I was working on photos and then I could fill in the details on this at the same time and eliminate a step later. So I've got my photos sorted. Here's Halloween. Now, the other thing that kind of freaks people out is using sticky notes on your photos. If that bothers you, put the sticky note on the back side of the photo and stack your photos in that way, right? So it doesn't matter. Um, I, it doesn't bother me. I put them on the front, but you can put them on, you can still use them. Just put them on the back side instead of the front and then here's the fourth of july picture set so i'm going to put that on right so now when i'm ready spring break oops. 
So now I've pre-sorted and labeled all of the pictures for that year, right? I can take, all, and then if I've got things I wanna add, now every picture isn't going in your scrapbook. Every picture or every group of picture doesn't need the event detail sheet, right? This is more, okay, I know I'm gonna scrap about spring break, so I'm gonna fill in the details on spring break, and I'm gonna add this right here to the spring break photos. I didn't put a spring break sticker on these, but. You have to imagine along with me. These are actually the spring break photos at Moab, there we are. So now I'm gonna include this in with my photos. I've got all the details and notes that I took, and when I'm ready to scrap this, I'm ready to go. I have everything I need. I've already written notes down. It's good to go. I can add to it if I think of things later, but it just eliminates a step because what we used to do, when I used to teach this class, I used to say, sort all your photos first and then do this piece during memento, uh, during project planning, right? But you should do it right when you're doing your photos and then you're gonna be a step ahead. Then you just need to choose how those are gonna be stored. Now. Most common question I get from people is about um, how do I store them? And I'm gonna just tell, there's, I only have a couple of rules, right? Go vertical whenever you can, combine and conquer, and then this, store your photos chronologically, okay? The question that most people ask is, oh, I have my photos sorted by, these are going in my Christmas album, these are going in my it's son's album, these are going in my daughter's album, or my grandson's album or any of those things, and they're everywhere. Your pictures are everywhere. It violates the combine and conquer rule, right? Keep your photos organized chronologically, add your notes to them. You, want, you might wanna put a note on here that says this is my grandson's, these are for my grandson's album. Maybe you have Christmas photos that are going to your family album, you know, a kid album, a grandkid album. <clears throat> All you need to do is maybe put a note at the top, this is for Bobby, this is for Susie, this is for me, but keep them chronologically in your photo files. Why? Uh, the first thing is when you go looking for them, if you have segmented things off all over your craft room, you're going to rely on your brain to remind you where those things are, right? Even if you have them in little envelopes, like from the photo developer, and they have the name on it, that little envelope is easy to stuff into a desk drawer or get buried under a stack of papers or put over where you're going to remember it somewhere else. But if you, and then you have to look for it. But if all of your photos are in chronological order, how, you know, in one place, then you can just say, I'm gonna work on Christmas 99. You can go there, only pull out Bobby's photos if you're only working on his album or pull out all three sets if you're working on Bobby, Susie, and your album, but it makes it really, really simple to find things because the other thing that happens is we have our photos printed and then we can't remember that we did that and we have them reprinted again if we're talking digital. So I'm gonna give you a little uh, tip on that as well in just a second. So go chronological. You can segment things within your chronological. So if I was working on, there's still some pictures in here. Oh, this is different. If I was working on an album, some of you have seen this, that's Christmas, I would use the same, these are pockets, but they would be labeled, right, the same way, London Max family, all together inside that box for those albums, so that I could keep everything together and find it, but it would still all be in chronological order. So that's, and that's really the key. Sometimes you need to find pictures before. Sometimes you just want to confirm that you have already printed them. And if you have to look for them all over your room, that's not, that's a pain in the neck. Okay, so you're going to sort your pictures. You're going to sort them chronologically. And then you're going to sort them within that chronological process by <clears throat> event, right? So Christmas, Easter, whatever it is. Make yourself some sticky notes first or at least some idea of labels first and, ke and keep your event detail sheets handy so you can fill in details as you go. Unless you get all your photos sorted in the first round, keep your photo uh, sorting sheets that you've made, right? And it's just, it is just that easy, simple sheet of paper and you're just throwing your photos on there. If you have a big stack, that's Christmas, go ahead and take your Christmas thing and stick it on there. As you find more Christmas, it's easy to put it in. So it just makes it really simple to keep sorting and 
do that second level sort at the same time. So once you get your photos sorted, then they're gonna all go chronologically in whatever tool you choose. And again, I will talk about <coughs> different tools later or our stuff later at, at the end of the class. So um, I said I would talk a little bit about printed photos. If you store your photos digitally, as most of us do now, and you've printed the photos from a particular event, the, the so you're gonna use the same concept. You're gonna have a big file folder, which would be a photo storage box, that's photos. And then if you take the lid off that, you've got things segmented by year. So then you're gonna open the first photo file and then there's photo files by year. And then you're gonna open the year photo file and the photos are gonna be in chronological order by event, right? So it might be January, New Year's Day party, February, Valentine's Day, March, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day, April. In the April folder, there's April snapshots. So that's the other thing that I do. I, every, every month has a, fo a folder called April snapshots, May snapshots. These are just random pictures that you take, especially now that we have so much digital stuff. Um, and they they just get thrown in there and I'm, I'm gonna tie I'm gonna put a name on everything I'll talk about that in a second as well so that if I'm working on a scrapbook page and I want to throw in some stuff that's just snapshot kind of daily life stuff I still have that organized but I'm not seeing it everywhere right so it makes it really simple um, and so each month or each year is gonna have 12 months and within those months you're gonna have folders that are other things one thing I really want to encourage you to do is don't download your pictures off anything unless you have time to also sort them into folders at that moment, right? Well, it's fresh in your mind. Take those extra few minutes. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to look at every photo. You can look at things by date and then know, um, you know, these are all April 13th. That's Tisa's birthday. Those are all going in Tisa's birthday. That was her party, her dinner, that kind of thing. So. Um, but take the time to, to sort when you download and it'll make your life so, so much simpler. Okay. So if you print the photos from Tisa's birthday on the photo, on the file, this is what I was getting to, I guess that says Tisa's birthday dash capital P these photos are printed, right? And then if you're not storing, if you're storing them chronologically, you're golden. If you're not storing them chronologically, put a note in that file about where you stored the photos. And at least you'll have some way to go back and find them when you can't find them around your room. But I'm really urging you, keep it all chronologically. The other thing about chronologically is that if something happens to you, chronologically makes sense to everyone else. So if someone else needed to find those pictures or wanted to find those pictures, um, well, and a lot of times our kids or grandkids do like family timelines are all about me or they need, you know, history pictures of them as babies, as first graders, whatever, for graduation events and that type of thing um putting things in chronological order makes it really easy for other people to find your stuff and again in the event that you are no longer with us most people understand or i said all people probably understand chronological order so it's easy for them to find the things in your room as well a little bit of a morbid thought but true okay so once you get your photos sorted organized chronologically you've got your subdivided into events throughout the year they're stored. Now you're ready to do your mementos, to organize your mementos. And one of the key things about organizing mementos is that they are can be bigger and bulkier than your photos and storing them together is difficult. So there's lots of ways to store mementos. You can store, we're going to talk about creating a holding album or creating a project planner. So at a, but I don't want you to, the other, bleh. I don't want you to do that for every photo. I just want you to do it for the project or projects that you're actually working on, right? So the idea is keep things in chronological order until you're ready to start a project and then sort them for your project. Same thing with mementos. So there's lots of ways to store mementos. You can put them all together in a binder. You've seen our project planners here. That's what that is, our memento keeper. So you could have a year of mementos in there. You might store them. This is uh, this is just a, what we call scrap master. And I've got some special paper that I bought for this trip to India. But these are all like the little mementos that I collected while we were traveling in India. 
The nice thing about something like a scrap master is you can throw it right into your suitcase if you're talking about a trip or traveling somewhere. And then you can put all of those specialty things, I mean, all those things that you collected while you're traveling right into that scrap master. And they stay relatively protected in the pocket or bottom of your suitcase. So they stay nice and flat. I did find some paper that's unique to India. So I threw that right in there as well. So something like that is gonna work great. And then you've got a file, right? Just label it India, file it with the rest of your um, craft stuff. 12 by this fits in a paper handler. It's also gonna fit on your shelf, your Ikea shelf. So if you've got those labeled, that's a great way to do that as well. Um, but you might also just end up with something like big manila folders, depending on how big, of, you know, this is just a big manila envelope. You can label it and store it in a filing cabinet, something like that. In any case, <coughs> probably the most important thing is to um, make a note with the pictures and with the mementos of where they are in relationship to each other. So if you have uh, mementos from your trip to India, you want to put a note with the photos that say mementos are in the file cabinet under year you know, 2019 India. Again, filing them chronologically is going to be key regardless of how you do it. But the important thing is we've all completed a scrapbook project and then found or remembered that there was some sort of memento that we wanted to include. So make sure you just put a note. And on this, on these sheets, there is a line that says, where are the photos slash mementos? So if you're filling this out and storing it with the photos, you can put a note on there. Mementos are in the filing cabinet. So it's just a little prompt to remind you that you have those mementos and then how are you going to tie them together and where are you going to find them so that when you're actually ready to start crafting everything's there for you all right so photos sorted we've got a timeline to help us sort we've got our photos sorted chronologically and in whichever type of storage box you're going to use our mementos are organized and now it's time to put together a project planner um, to work on a particular scrapbooking project with those photos. So this is a binder system. Um, this is a, just a 12 by 12 binder from, this is one of our regular, oh, there's my label. One of our regular 12 by 12 binders with a variety of pages in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this project planner sheet, well, not on this one, sorry. I'm gonna show you one that I have done actually. It's a little bit of a mess because my holes ripped. This is the old project planner sheet. <clears throat> it didn't, it was, it had one less line in the columns, right? But this was a road trip plan that I did with the kids. So there was my book, London's book, Max's book, and keeping track of who I'd done what for became really difficult. And that is how this was born. So these are all the stops in the road trip. Then you have a column for how many photos you're going to use. Now, this is the part that kind of freaks people out. Before you start choosing photos and setting up your project planner, what you don't want to do is include in your project planner 300 pictures and you only actually are going to use 100, right? You don't want to go through, because if you put those 300 in there, you're going to go through them over and over and over again. Choose the photos or number, set a number of photos per page and estimate the pages that you're going to do. And then you can choose photos smartly. It's easier for your brain. So one of the problems that your brain has trouble with is ambiguity, right? Your brain likes to know exactly what's going on and how everything's going to happen. So when you're, when you're deciding on your photo store, your photo pages, how many pages you're going to do of this particular thing and how many photos you need per page, it makes it really much simpler to choose the best photos. So this is really hard for people to get their brain around. And so before you say, I can't do it that way, just try it. Just try it on one project and see how it works out for you. Because the beauty of it is that it might be flawless and you may have picked all the pictures exactly right and they're gonna look amazing and your project is done. Or you might get into the project and think, oh, I wish I had a few more pictures. I wish I had another page or I want to add another page. At which point you can go back to your photo storage box, pick out a few more pictures and do that next page, right? But you may find that you stay focused and get more done and are happier with your end result because you spend a little time on the front end choosing what you were going to do. And the beautiful thing about it is 
you can try this system and if you don't like it, you can tweak it a little bit, which is really kind of like what commonly happens. So for me, if I'm doing a layout, I choose six pictures per 12 by 12 page. That's my rule. I choose six. That's the max that'll fit on a page without chopping them up. So when we're doing this road trip uh, travel, I'm doing six pictures, one page for that for the trip down. So I had to choose the six best pictures from the trip down. That was gonna be my road trip down page. And then for Disneyland, well, we were at Disney, I have a little subdivided category for Disney. I'm gonna do 36 pictures of Disney. And I know some of you get a stomach ache thinking that if you go to Disney and you only do 36 and only doing 36 pictures, but your number might be 96. Your number might be 600. You might do two albums of a trip to Disney all I want you to do is focus in on, I'm going to tell you why, another reason why this is important, how many pages you're going to do so that when you're ready, you have the pictures and they're sorted. So for me, it's 36 pages for Disney. I'm going to do one page, one double page spread of the rides, one double, double page spread of the characters, uh, one pa double page spread of, no, uh, one side is the parade and the other side I think is um, fireworks or something. But I, but I pre like pre lined that out. This is what I'm going to do. And then it was easy for me to pick those pictures. And again, I know some people think, Oh, I could never do that. I could never like just go through and choose that. But it's probably because you've never stepped away from just scrapbooking and thought about that planning out, because I think you'll find that it's easier than you think. You might not do it like I did characters rides. You might look at Disney and go day one, day two, day three equally easy to sort and organize day one, day two, day three, right? You've got the dates, you're going to choose those things. So you don't have to necessarily use exactly the same sort of uh, titles or concepts that I'm using, but just think about those. How many pages am I going to do? Why? First thing you want to do is keep in mind that scrapbooking, the goal of scrapbooking is to share your memories and f with others and also enjoy them again yourself. And so if you want people to continue to look through your scrapbooks and enjoy that, you have to make sure you're telling a story that's moving along pretty quickly. If you have two, two albums of a trip to Disney, it's difficult for other people to enjoy that, right? Some will, but most people want to see a few of the highlights of your trip. So keep that in mind. <coughs> what, what's your goal in scrapbooking? Is it just for yourself or is it for sharing with other people and family members? Maybe you take your albums to family reunions and that type of thing. And so moving those stories along fairly quickly is important if you want to keep people engaged and entertained in what you're doing and really enjoying your work. But there is no hard and fast rule, right? There isn't one. You can choose however you want to do it. I just want you to think about all these concepts as you're working. Okay. So you're going to organize things by into your uh, project planner. So this one, again, this is just on a spinder. You can do it in a three ring notebook, but it has just everything is labeled. And then since I was doing multiple albums, I have kid pictures, family pictures, and all the pockets are labeled. So I know what goes in whose album. And then I've got all of my memento pieces, because they're all gone out of that section, but here in, the, in another pocket, right? So this is just a 12 by 12 storage pocket, and it's got all the mementos from this part of the trip. If you want things sorted out a little bit more so you can see, this is, a, um, this is called a four by one. It has four small pockets on the front, one 12 by to the back. So if you want to organize your things more, group them out a little bit more and see them, rather than throwing them all into one big pocket. That's a great way to do it. Now the project planner pages are big, thick, gusseted pages, and those work great as well, especially if you've been on a trip where you've collected a ton of stuff. So they're gonna give you a little bit more storage than the regular scrap rack pages. But I've got each section in here, and it's just labeled with a sticky note label, so I can follow along, sort my pictures, have my mementos. When I'm done with all the pictures, all the pockets, will be empty. If there's any mementos left, I can throw them away in good conscience because I know I've done the scrapbook pages, I've added the different things, the zoo maps, the tickets, all of that stuff where I wanted them and anything else is extra and I can it can be tossed away. And another oh stomach ache moment, but if you think about it as crafters, 
um, when, or, or scrapbookers, when we go somewhere, we collect multiples of things, right? I had four maps of SeaWorld. I might have had six napkins from the restaurant. Uh, whatever it is, little things that we collect as mementos as we go along, we collect extra just for scrapbooking. And so there are going to be extra pieces, but you don't really need to save them unless for some reason they didn't make it into your book and you still want to keep them. I mean, you can, but the idea here is that, oh, I've used all the things I need to use and you can get comfortable with letting go of some of that stuff. Okay. The next question I get asked about this project planning um, is what about, uh, do I put my craft supplies in there? My papers, stickers, embellishments, all the things I'm going to use. So I'm going to start first with this. This is submitted years ago by a gal named, I think her name's Jill Cooper, if I'm remembering correctly. This will be a download also on your handout. And it's just a little layout sketchbook. And it, it, so you can kind of draw out what you're going to put where, and then it has a little checklist on it for different embellishments and that type of thing. This is a really helpful planner um, before you start buying specific things like say Disney to know, okay, I'm going to do 12 pages of Disney. So I need at least 12 sheets of background paper, 12 by 12 paper. Maybe you like to keep your paper consistent through a project. Um, I need this many embellishments or this type of embellishment. So next level, if you print this out and include it, sketch out what you need, then you're going to have at least have an idea when you go out and buy specialty things like Disney paper, how many you need. So in general, I would say no, don't pull things out of your scrap rack or, or out of your storage system and put them in your project planner, right? Um, then that you're going to pull them all out. And then when you're done, you're going to have to put them all away. You might forget that they're in there and you could have used them on something else. There's all kinds of different things going on there. But what you should put in here is anything that is completely specific to that event. So this is SeaWorld um, paper, stickers, embellishments. They say SeaWorld all over them. Paper, that's all it says. SeaWorld, SeaWorld, SeaWorld. I'm not going to use these anywhere but SeaWorld. So when it doesn't matter, I'm not going to be looking for them in my scrap rack or using them in my scrap rack. They are only for SeaWorld. When I am done with this project, those are going to go away. They're going to be donated or put in the purge box or whatever happens because I'm done with SeaWorld. Now you might have a little bit different experience if you, so I won't go back to SeaWorld until my kids have kids and um, I'm there as a grandmother, right? And at that point, I'm going to want to buy new SeaWorld stuff. I'm going to want to find the, whatever's new and cool in scrapbooking at that time that fits that because scrapbooking is, as we know, a fashion forward hobby. So colors and styles and design and technique, all that stuff changes. So I don't want to hang on to that for 20 years. That might be a little bit different if you're someone who goes to Mexico every year on family vacation, then you may want to have your, I mean, you're going to have your Mexico section in your scrap rack, but you don't want to get rid of things at the end because you're going to go to Mexico again and again, right? So just kind of keep in mind what I can get rid of at the end is going to go here. What I'm going to continue to use after is going to stay in my scrap rack or whatever organization system you're using, right? So then when you actually sit down to work on this project, you can go right to those sections, pull out what you need and work just like a normal project, but everything else is right here. So within that project, if you're doing multiple albums, I would strongly encourage you to use the multiple album planner. And it does have a com uh, column on there for how many pictures, how many pages you're going to do, how many pictures you need, are the pictures printed, and then is that project done? So super simple way to track multiple projects. The planner sheet is there also, so you can download that and include it and start kind of sketching out what's going to go where, and that's going to help you. How many pictures do you need? What's going on each page? Unless you already have an idea of how that's supposed to work in your head. And then of course you've got your event sheets, event detail sheets that you're just going to add to your photos as you sort them, right? Just work through little by little and filling in those notes along with your family timeline to keep those things organized. So your mission this week, is to get started on photos. Now, um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Uh, now you've got your challenge checklist. So 
create a family timeline, gather your photos, uh, choose your photo storage options, create your sorting guides and event notes, organize a one year of photos chronologically that could be digital or um, physical photos. Now, you could be over, you could have tons of photos, like years and years of them. That's a lot. It's hard to get your brain around. One thing I want to recommend to you, and it's photos are about the only, and mementos about the only thing you can do this with, is if you have family members, maybe you do family home evening on Wednesday night, pull out a couple of boxes of photos and use that as your evening family night, right? Sorting pictures. You're going to get a ton of stories from your family as they're helping you sort and organize pictures because everybody remembers things differently. So get, have your timeline out, have your notes out, and as you all are sorting those pictures, um, then you can get details. You can kind of pick everybody else's brain about different events and put them right on your event sheet so you have somebody's perspective other than your own when you're doing the journaling in your scrapbook. So you're gonna do one year of photos if you're doing them on your own, and then you're gonna add another year for every person you can recruit to help you, right? So um, the nice thing about photos is they're completely objective. They're dates and times and places so other people can help you, whereas sorting your craft supplies is a little bit more difficult to get other people to help. Um, you're going to gather your mementos and store them the same way. How are you going to store them? Are you going to put them all in uh, binders like our... Like our um, uh, Memento Keeper project planner. Maybe you're going to use 12 by 12 binders or just binders with pages and dividers. Something where you can bring all those things together. Maybe you're going to use the Scrap Master. That was an, a good option as well. I'll try to link all these things into your handout so they're easy to find when you're looking for them also. Um, choose your storage solutions for your Mentos. Again, one year of Mementos is your goal. And then, if you're ready, put together a project planner. What are you working on now? What, what scrapbook project are you working on? Put together a project planner for that. Pull those pieces together. Get everything in order. Choose how many pages you're going to do. And when you're ready, when you have time to scrap, you'll be ready to sit down and just get started straight away. So that is your challenge for this week. Once you meet your challenge, then I want you to, of course, enjoy your reward. And whatever you do, don't forget to sign up for this week's prize. Woo! Awesome. Good prize stuff. Okay, so just quickly then at the back of your handout, you've got a couple pages of some of the different products, most of the different products that I showed and talked about here. So if you want to learn more about creating the, or what what components it takes, the binder, the pages, the dividers. There's bind, There's a binder option in there. You can click on each of those things and look through it. The four by six and the five by seven photo storage boxes. Now, these come two ways. They come with, po you can get them with pockets, right? So this is, a this is the family picture layout from this trip. Or you can get them with file folders. The file folders, <coughs> excuse me, look like this. So they have this paper insert on the inside. Again, you can use that to fill out the details on that event or whatever it is and then label it the same way that I labeled the photos, right? So you have two choices with the fab files. Now, why do I love the fab files? I mentioned this earlier. I love being able to grab something off the shelf in one hand, bring it to my workspace and be ready to go. So it's small, it's compact, it's easy. I could throw it in my tote and take it to a crafting event and know that I had everything organized in there and ready to go also chronologically with my notes and all of that stuff. So that's why I love the fab files, just this easiness of it, less overwhelming when you're pulling them off the shelf than something like a photo storage box as well. So um, just kind of a personal choice there on which way you wanna go. So this is the five by seven pocket. This is the five by seven file folder. Both of them fit into and come. So when you're looking at fab files, the, the four by six comes with files. And so it'll say in the description, four by six with files, four by six fab file with files, four by six fab file with pockets. Same thing with the five by seven. So um, keep your, keep, you make sure you pay attention to the details so you, that you know exactly what you're getting. The album storage boxes, the big, uh, these big 12 by 12, Album storage boxes, this one happens to have gift bags in it. These are a great place 
There's a three ring style, which is this one. It's a little bit narrower and taller. And then there's also the strap hinge style, which is this one, shorter and fatter. So these, those are also um, great places for storing mementos. And as you can see, they're lightweight and they're easy to put up on the shelf and label. So if you're gonna store things in the closet, um, it's a great way to do that as well. So all of those are kind of detailed out in the back of the handout. Um, oh, one thing I didn't talk too much about is if you're, if you're, when you're labeling photos, so I'm gonna backtrack on that. Um, this is how I do it. When you download your photos from your camera, the date is the first part. And the way it's set up from your camera is uh, the best possible way to sort chronologically, right? It's year, month, day, two digits. So everything is already in chronological order when it comes off your camera. And then there's some weird gobbledygook numbers after that. I don't know what they mean. Maybe someone out there does and you can share it with me. But what I do is take big chunks of those photos. I leave the date because I want the chronological date. I want that to be searchable. And then I'll just add words after it. So Tisa's birthday party. I'm going to take everything from Tisa's birthday party from that date. And I'm going to take out the gobbledygook. I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to right click, rename and change all the gobbledygook to Tisa's birthday party or something like that. Or Tisa B day is actually how I'm going to do it. Um, and then, and I always use the same terms, which I guess there's a little bit of a description in here about that. So this is a perpetual calendar, also known as a birthday calendar. It just has the month and then the days. So you can fill it in one time and have that forever, right? So this is how I keep track of, let me get to Tisa's birthday here what little codes I'm using for each person. So when I'm labeling photos, Tisa's birthday, April 13th, and this highlighted thing, Tisa, that's my code for Tisa. Well, her real name's Teresa Irene, but Tisa is her code. If you go to London's birthday, his says LT. So anything that has a, that is a picture of London, um, I'm gonna add that code LT into it, not everything. So when I did Tisa's birthday party, I know London was there. Right, I know Max was there. So I'm gonna highlight everything Tisa B Day. And then I can go back and search Tisa B Day and it's gonna bring up in the computer all of Tisa's birthdays from the time I started labeling that way, 1999 I think, until now. And then if I wanna add in 2021 to bring narrow it down, 2021 Tisa B Day, and it's gonna bring up all of those pictures for me. So I don't have to search, I don't have to remember, I, mean, I don't have to go through file after file looking or go to the, Photos, year, month, Tisa's birthday, right? I'm just gonna type in Tisa's birthday in the search and it's gonna bring those up for me when I'm ready to scrap them, take me back to that file. So really shortcuts, finding photos if you spend a little bit of time coding them to get started. Now, you can actually go far more in depth. I could do, like here's a chunk of Tisa's birthday generic and then here's London at Tisa's birthday and it would be Tisa's or Tisa B Day, comma, LT, London. So if I search Tisa B Day, LT, that would bring that up. I can add in the year again. So you can go as many levels deep as you want. I would absolutely suggest go at least go first level when you download. So if you went to Disneyland, no, I would do, <coughs> I'll do it by date. So you spend a week at Disneyland, take the first day that you were there, and leave that, highlight all of those, rename Disney, maybe even day one. And then you've got the second day, highlight all of those, rename, leave the date and put in Disney. And that'll keep things in chronological order, but still have them labeled as your Disney trip for that year. I hope that makes sense. There are a couple of blog posts and stuff up about that because I know it's a little bit overwhelming just um, talking it through. Okay, my friends. Hopefully I've done more to inspire and motivate you today than I have done to confuse you about getting your photos organized. Print your hand out, follow along. Uh, I will see all of you next week for challenge number 11. I think we're gonna talk about tools next week, so that'll be fine. All right, everybody, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in today.